Let's say you're craving a burger, but you want it from a place with a goofy sounding name, and McDonald's, Five Guys, and Shake Shack just aren't tickling your funny bone. <laughs> well, never fear, because thanks to the wonders of capitalism and the free market, there's Fuddruckers. Until there almost wasn't. Confused? Let us explain. Today, we're ringing the bell on the rise and fall of Fuddruckers. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other fast, casual burger chains you would like to hear about. Okay, get ready to ruck some FUD. The first Fuddruckers opened its doors in San Antonio, Texas in 1979. It was actually called Freddy Fuddruckers, and it was founded by Freddy F. Fuddrucker IV of Freeport, Florida. Okay, that's not true. He just couldn't resist the alliteration. It was really founded by Philip J. Romano of Auburn, New York, the same entrepreneur and restaurateur who would go on to found the Macaroni Grill in 1988. When you're a hit maker, you're a hit maker. Prior to going into the restaurant biz, Romano was the owner of two successful karate schools. He had to sell them to raise the money to finance his first eateries, but we're still hoping he'll eventually combine his interests and create Fuddruckerati to use against thuggish burgers. Romano founded Fuddruckers because, in his own words, I thought the world needed a better hamburger. Hey, be the change you want to see in the world, right? Romano wanted to get into the burger business, but he didn't want to create just another fast food chain. So instead, he created a burger eating experience that was quicker and easier than a traditional sit-down restaurant, but more substantial than what you're used to getting from fast food joints. For example, like at a fast food place, customers would order at a counter. But like at a restaurant, they would get real dishes and silverware. These days, there are plenty of such places, including well-known chains like Five Guys and Shake Shack. But back at the dawn of the 1980s, there weren't a lot of burger chains quite like Fuddruckers. Romano also wanted his restaurant to have a more grown-up vibe than the fast food places. Want to do Fuddruckers tonight? What kind of a you think I am? <laughs> and considering the world's biggest fast food burger place was represented by a literal children's birthday party clown, that wasn't going to be difficult. In fact, the bar was so low, Romano felt comfortable his chain would seem more grown-up even if it had the especially goofy name of Freddy Fuddruckers. No, really, that was the original name. So at this point, you're probably wondering, who the hell is Freddy Fuddrucker? And why did Romano name his burger chain after him? Was he an early investor in the business? A war hero who saved Romano's life in combat? A master chef with a secret recipe for the world's greatest burgers? Sadly, no, no, and no. According to Romano, the name was inspired by an old inside joke in the aviation community about a fictional company called Fuddpucker Airlines. In the 1970s, Fuddpucker Airlines was something between an urban legend and a marketing fad. Allegedly founded by Dudley P. Fuddpucker Jr. of Hicksville, New York, Fuddpucker was humorously held out as the world's only steam-powered airline. The company name appeared on all sorts of kitschy merchandise, like t-shirts, mugs, stickers, embroidered patches, and even novelty pilot's licenses. The name was also briefly used by a group of stunt pilots who flew military vehicles at air shows. We'd love to say that Romano used Fuddpucker as the basis of Fuddrucker because he had some deep, meaningful connection to the name. But the boring truth is, he just kind of liked the sound of the words and went with it on a whim. The name was meant to convey a sense of fun, and we have to agree, he totally nailed it. According to the company, Fuddruckers burgers are made from fresh, never frozen, 100% USDA all-American premium cut beef, cooked to order and served on a sesame-topped bun, baked from scratch in an on-premise bakery. Customers are offered a choice of a one-third, one-half, or two-third pound patty, and one of four different cheeses. They can then build their own burger, so to speak, with toppings from the Market Fresh Produce Fixins Bar. Whether they are truly the world's greatest hamburgers, as the slogan claims, is a matter of fierce debate in scientific circles. But they must have come close, because the first Fuddruckers was a smash hit. Within three short years, the franchise had 20 locations in the Lone Star State. Emboldened by the success, the company went public in 1983, and then immediately began expanding across the country. They multiplied like wet gremlins. And by 1988, there would be over 150 Fuddruckers scattered about the U.S. 
With a moniker like Fuddruckers, name recognition grew fast, making the company a fairly legitimate competitor to fast food chains and established burger joints. In 1988, however, Romano would say goodbye to the business he founded and move on to greener, macaroni-flavored pastures. He would sell Fuddruckers to a restaurant operating company called Daca International, who, in 1997, would spin its food division off into a company called Unique Casual Restaurants Incorporated. They, in turn, would sell it a year later to a company called King Cannon, operated by British entrepreneur, investor, and restaurant industry figure Michael Cannon. He would quickly sell it again in 1998 to another company he owned, Magic Brands LLC, which was also owner of the Kukuru chain of fast casual eateries. So long story short, Fuddruckers has been owned by pretty much every last mother rucker in the food business. Fuddruckers has always been about the burgers. Fudd's prime. But that still leaves a lot of room for creativity and the menu has expanded quite a bit over the decades. For example, in addition to the regular old hamburger, there's also a bacon cheddar burger, a barbecue burger, a bourbon burger, a green chili cheeseburger, a mushroom Swiss burger, a Southwest burger, a Texas burger, and a whole bunch of others. And if beef isn't your thing, they also offer a turkey burger and a veggie burger. Or if you want something a little more interesting, some locations offer a buffalo burger and an elk burger. And if that's not interesting enough for you, some locations have even offered burgers made from lamb, boar, and ostrich. Although you presumably have to catch the ostrich first. Even if you aren't in the mood for burgers, Fuddruckers has you covered. The menu also includes buffalo wings, fish and chips, a chili cheese dog, a tilapia sandwich, a chicken sandwich, and a ribeye steak sandwich. We're pretty sure that covers all the food groups. At its height, Fuddruckers had over 220 locations in 35 states, as well as a handful of locations in other countries, including Puerto Rico, Canada, Mexico, the Dominican Republic, Chile, Colombia, Panama, Italy, Poland, and Switzerland. But no empire lasts forever, no matter how fun its name is. If you were around in 2008, you almost certainly remember the global financial crisis, the single worst worldwide economic downturn since the Great Depression. Nobody had any money, which was bad for the restaurant business. As a slightly higher priced alternative to fast food burger joints, Fuddruckers struggled more than most in the difficult economic climate. In April of 2010, its parent company announced it would be waiving the business world equivalent of the white flag and filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Locations were closed, and the company made plans to sell itself to an investment group known as the Tavistock Group for $40 million, which would be distributed to Magic's shareholders. But the sun was shining on Freddie Fuddrucker that day, because at the last minute, Tavistock was outbid by Luby's Incorporated who ponied up $61 million for the chain's parent company. Luby's tried to make a go of it. Really, they did. But even something as simple as selling hamburgers isn't always quite so simple. Right off the bat, Luby had to go to war, legally speaking. Have you had a drink today? Objection, Your Honor, relevancy. With a former Fuddruckers executive who had continued to operate five locations under the name Fuddruckers, even though the company had told him to stop. At the same time, in an effort to make its customers feel safer, in 2010, the chain implemented and began to enforce a no-weapons policy at its locations. As a result, Second Amendment enthusiasts threatened boycotts. Then in 2014, Luby attempted to build the brand out a little bit by opening up the first Fuddruckers Deluxe in Newport News, Virginia. Fuddruckers Deluxe offered all of the amenities of a full-service restaurant, including a waitstaff. It served classic Fuddruckers menu items and a few new ones, but strangely lacked the iconic produce bar. But Fuddruckers Deluxe didn't have the charm of the original fast casual locations and quietly went out of business in 2018. The last straw for Luby's came in early 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic turned the world upside down. Food service businesses struggled in general during the pandemic, and Fuddruckers' premium pricing meant that, once again, it would have a particularly hard time. Not that things were going so great before the pandemic. In 2019, for example, Fuddruckers did a paltry $180 million worth of sales, compared to McDonald's, which raked in somewhere north of $40 billion. Also coming out ahead of Fuddruckers in sales that year were Whataburger, In-N-Out, Steak and Shake, Five Guys, Carl's Jr., Shake Shack, Checkers, A&W, 
All-American Burger, and a whole lot of others. The writing was on the wall, and in September of 2020, Luby announced plans to liquidate the chain, which at that point consisted of about 80 restaurants. Freddie Fuddrucker would be put out to pasture in August of 2021. Or would he? Things looked pretty bleak for Fuddruckers, but then a hero emerged. Just as it seemed Fuddruckers' time was up, Nicholas Perkins of Black Titan Franchise Systems stepped in and bought the Fuddruckers brand for just under $19 million, becoming owner of 14 locations and franchiser of all others. An entrepreneur who grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Perkins had developed a taste for Fuddruckers by stopping there on his way to and from baseball camp as a teenager. His purchase of Fuddruckers made it the first black-owned national burger franchise in the U.S. While it's not quite what it was at its height, thanks to Perkins, Fuddruckers is still around today. As of 2024, they currently have roughly 55 locations still open across the U.S as well as one location in Canada and another in Mexico. And if you're a Fuddruckers fan who happened to hear on the internet that the chain is closing all of its locations, you can relax. According to Perkins, the rumor that the franchise was on its way out was misinformation being spread by a non-credible blog. Not only did he deny the rumor, he claimed Fuddruckers would actually be expanding and welcoming new franchisees into the family in 2024. In Perkins' own highly enthusiastic words, we look forward to continuing our legacy as the world's greatest hamburger. Bigger, bolder, beefier than ever. Well, the kids do love Fuddruckers. Yeah, getting the design any burger you want? Your only limit is your imagination. Freddie Fuddrucker himself could not have said it any better. So what do you think? Have you ever eaten at a Fuddruckers? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.